Welcome to Real Talk presented by Scotiabank. So the goal here at Real Talk is to have conversations, important conversations, um, obviously surrounding hockey, but regarding diversity, inclusion, uh, it's a good opportunity to learn and listen. So we're going to speak to two very important guests today. They're fantastic. The first of which, um, Alejo Aribo, I really, really would love if you guys would go online, go to our website, talkygirls.com, take a look at her story. Fantastic. She'll let you know. But uh, between the ages of, let's say, 16 and 18, she's done so much for the hockey community and helping inclusion, particularly people of color, getting involved with hockey, which is very, very important. And we're also going to be speaking to Isabelle Etzi. Uh, Isabelle founded Femme de Hockey. So that's a multimedia platform that looks at hockey from a human perspective. We all know it's more than what just goes on in the ice. And it's more than just mom bringing you to the tournament in the morning, uh, far, far away. And then and she finds her favorite uh, coffee spot. There's so much when it comes to including women in our sport. And it goes beyond the ice. It's the lifestyle. It's, you know, there's coaching, there's refs. So we're going to talk about how making it a little more inclusive, a little more comfortable for women as well. And uh, we're going to get to that right now. So this is Real Talk presented by Scotia. Alejo and Isabel, thank you so much for joining me today. A real pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. All right, I'm very curious. I, I, I looked out, I looked you guys up. Uh, I, I checked out all the information, but I want to hear more about it because you both have different journeys into hockey. Um, I'm curious what sparked your passion for hockey in the first place. What led you, Alero, to create Hockey Girls? And you, Isabelle, um, you created Fam Hockey. So let's start with Alero. Um, what got you into hockey? Um, it's actually a pretty funny story. Um, I was in a French school. I moved to French school um, after a year of being in Canada. So, sorry, my mom. Hello. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> say hello. <laughs> hello. You it know, was, this is hockey. Hockey mom. All the women in hockey. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, if she's going to drive people to tournaments, she's allowed to be a part of the podcast. The you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you, so when you came here, that's what you're saying. So you moved to Quebec, right? And you were yeah, in Lagos I'm, State, right? I was in Lagos State, yeah, in Nigeria. So I came to Canada, then I went to English school for a year. Then I moved to French school. And then in French school, we're in the class that day, where you're kind of learning about Quebec culture and like, just try to get you more into Canada and the, the culture here. So my assignment was to research on sport. So I was Googling around and I was like, hey, what is this? You know, what is hockey? Because in Nigeria, obviously we don't have um, heat. It's very hot, we don't have ice. It's not really yeah. anything we do there. So I was like, wow, this is cool. Like, how are they on ice? So I found a rink near my house. And from then I was just going every day to skate. And then that's how I got into hockey. Then um, during the quarantine, um, I realized that I was trying to get better. I got a, a hockey net and a, a shooting pad, and I was trying to learn, you know, how to do my shots. And everywhere I Googled, it was always just men, boys teaching boys, men teaching men. So I was like, oh no, this sucks. So, <laughs> so I, I did some emails and I wrote some messages to some uh, women I followed on Instagram in the hockey community. And I was like, hi, can you give me some information or like videos and articles? I'm trying to put together a website just so like any girl who wants to learn hockey or is interested, just go on there. If you see on the website, it's specific to your, uh, your what you play, forward, defense, goalie. Mm -hmm. So whatever you want to play, position you play, just press and you find whatever you need. So that's kind of how I started to start Hockey Girls, the website. Wow. And so so you essentially saw there was an issue and you fixed it immediately, which congratulations. <laughs> yeah. so what position do you play? Thank uh, you. I think I'm more of defense. Yeah? That's what I figured I like. Yeah. Okay. I'm See, I, I'm a goalie because I can't skate. That's what that's what they do is they put the you know the, the big guy in nets. But uh, yeah. hey man, defense is the important position. What what about you, Isabel? I was looking over your 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 uh, website, um Fam Daki. There's a thousand things to go over, a lot of different uh, aspects. Can you explain a little bit uh, what the concept is behind Fam Daki? The goal is to uh, create a community. It's to talk about women in hockey, not only uh, women hockey players, but also moms, volunteers, a sister, uh, wives. So there's uh, also people in the business of hockey. I think at France Margaret at the, the Canadian Montreal, there's yep. so many women involved in hockey. So I thought it was important to talk about all those women and bring lights, highlights to those girls and women. 
Absolutely. And, and I know as someone that works in the industry, I'm surrounded by brilliant, um, brilliant women that, 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 that make a lot of the men look good. I'll, I'll be honest here, but my boss is a woman, her boss is a woman. So um, when we look at it, there's so much in the actual professional game already that's being led by that. So highlighting obviously very important, but we just don't hear about it. Um, both your platforms, you launched during a pandemic. I was on the couch eating as many Cheetos as possible. That was all I could do. <laughs> My focus was survival. You guys launched your websites. What was it like doing that during the pandemic? We'll start with you, uh, Lero. Um, it was a bit difficult. I mean, I had a lot of time in my hands. I had a lot of time, you know, just like being at home. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I was still in school. So like just between classes and just like, it just meant like less Netflix because <laughs> I wasn't doing anything Aww. else but Netflix. So it was like, just like, it was, it was fun. I mean, um, Lots of people were also doing a lot of things online, so I was able to meet more people, and they were very happy to help. So it was it was a nice experience. And you, Isabel, you also launched uh, in 2020, yeah. summer of 2020, right? Yeah, but it was right after a contract I had with the Midget AAA. Now we call it M18. Mm -hmm. uh, so I did uh, a tour. I was across Quebec to uh, visiting all the team, and I saw so many women and men involved. And I felt like I had to do something. I have to act on it. And it was during the pandemic so I had a little time so I decided let's do it let's do a podcast let's create a community and make sure we talk about uh, the human side of hockey as well yeah we would like to have a place where women are feel free to be uh, the way they are and it's all about different kind of fun because it's you don't have, you can be passionate only during a, a part of the season you can be involved in hockey because you have a son or a girls who play hockey so i just decided to take that that to take that moment to create the platform and there's something really important worth noting because you know there's a lot of people when you talk to them about hockey they say i've been watching since you know 1800 whatever and that is great but there is no such thing as a better fan right there's a fan is a fan and the only bad fan is the one that tells others they're not good mm -hmm. enough to be a fan right so that's the message here is that yeah. um we, we we absolutely not only do we do we want we need um fans from every spectrum so that is very uh, very important. Now, let's move on to something. It's no secret. Hockey is not the most accessible sport. It's expensive. We know that. Um, you know, we can think of some programs. For example, PK Subban ran his program mm -hmm. to uh, help with hockey equipment in Canada. It, access to leagues is difficult, too. Um, there's a lack of representation, whether it's Black, Indigenous, people of color, um, all over hockey and more. So what are the barriers that exist right now? And what are some some quick wins? You know, we talk a lot, but eventually we need some wins here. What's an easy thing that could be done in the short term to make hockey more inclusive? We'll start with you, Isabel. But I, I feel like we need to open barrier. I, I will tell you a story just happened in Hamas. There's this uh, little girl who contacted me via my platform, uh, Mallory, and she's 17 years old. She never played in a, a league and she wanted to to have a try and she wanted to improve herself. So she contacted me and we let her do the pre-camp and it was very inspirational. So I think we need to think more about the fun part. We need to think about different ways of playing hockey. There is on ice, but be, because hockey is not only played on the ice, there's also deck hockey, hockey ball. There's so many ways to do it. So I feel then we need to open space for people from everywhere to be able to try the game. And when we try it, then we can play. Yeah, and that's when people fall in love with it, right? When you give them an opportunity. Um, you, Alero, particularly as a uh, person of color, what do you believe we can do to break down some of those barriers and not just talk? I know talk is important. Awareness is important. Eventually, there needs to be action. And I don't want to put it all on your shoulders either. But do you have any ideas how we can overcome some of these barriers that are perhaps keeping some people at bay from enjoying this amazing sport? Absolutely. I mean, I, I relate with this on a lot of levels in terms of even the fun part, because uh, actually I tried out to play hockey mm -hmm. late last year and you know, I was told I couldn't play in the in the league. He was like, sorry, we because of my age, I was 16 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had been actually been, I was training a lot before then. I was like on the ice seven hours a day. I was like, okay, I want to get on the team. It was, it was a lot of time I put into it. Right? And they told me, sorry, it's like, 
if you it's only boys it's only a boys team and you know boys they check and stuff so it's like it's going to be really dangerous for you to play with boys at a high level at that they only had i think double a so i was told i couldn't play so then actually right now i'm starting a team in coten luc with the city so the the guy who told me no he's like well this is a problem i keep, i can't keep saying no to more people like you who are interested in the game who just because of their ages cannot play a sport that's amazing so we're working together right now to start a team in uh later in the year or maybe next year to have more girls and more girls of color you know come into hockey so just like you both said the fun part is very important because sometimes not everyone wants to play high level hockey some people want to play for fun right mm-hmm. some people want to play just recreationally and not everyone has can just go to because I, there are pickup games i've been to a pickup game you know right here in my backyard with the guys and it's not very fun you know because i was learning i'm a beginner i'm not as fast i'm not very good with the puck yet but they have been playing for years they're like you know they don't even pass you the puck you know sometimes so it's like I want to play with other girls, you know, who are just for fun. We want to be able to play for fun. So I think having the grassroots level, having programs to have more girls into it is something we can do. So um with the team in later in the year, we're going to have girls of all ages, like mostly even the little girls, so that when we when we bring them the sport at a young age, they will be the next generation of fans who will be in hockey. So I think, you know, that is very important to have more representation more um inclusiveness yeah. in the mm-hmm. sport i'm sorry i'm talking a bit too much no no I'm, you're not no, I, no it's good good continue going. i'll say the same so i'm learning well. here so yeah <laughs> thank you so i feel like um even in my in my class alone just me cuz i'm obsessed basically with hockey so i'm always talking about it 24/7 yeah so I, i know that friends, yeah. <laughs> i've had friends from cameroon from cote d'ivoire all my friends who like would never have thought of hockey I I told her to come with me to the ice one day. The on the next week we got her skates. Now she's a hockey fan. So it's just like just need to tell people about it, get them interested, let them know that they can also play. And just like that we're going to have people of different colors, backgrounds, every everything in the game. It's funny because I've spoken to hundreds of men professional players throughout and you two are the first ones to bring up fun in a game which is kind of mind blowing when you think about it how we somehow kind of moved away from what the whole point of this is to have fun is to not have to worry about the world and when you're skating you're flying right basically exactly. you know you yeah. get to just focus on what's on the ice so thank you very much for bringing us back there because i you know that idea of fun i love it but we don't talk about it especially in the professional game um yeah. so if you start at the grassroots level obviously maybe we can bring that level of fun up and it's something i would see back in the day in the CWHL there's a lot more fun when the when honestly when these women were playing hockey in the fans it wasn't angry cheering it was happy cheering you know so that's yeah. something that i think our game But definitely definitely let needs. me tell you something during the series mm-hmm. i felt that the guys had fun to play hockey and they were winning i yeah. think it's the key when you have a team working together Mm-hmm. and you have fun then you're going to win because you're playing for the right reason and this is something very important for me and this is something i wanted to show with famdaki it's to bring back this this fun part and the human side of it because this is so much important in this yeah, absolutely yeah yeah and a good message for parents too keep it fun always mm-hmm. keep it fun that's the most yeah. important thing here yeah In an interview um we saw on Fam Daki uh Isabel you had a lero on and you were discussing a, a myriad of things so I suggest whoever has the opportunity right now go on the Fam Daki website you can check that out um you talked about Alero you talked about a friend whose mother said hockey is a white sport you should not be playing hockey because it's a sport for white people and you also mentioned i mean that caught me off guard but i thought okay sure yeah you know what that kind of makes sense it's unfortunate to hear but that's the way we set it up um you think that perception is changing what can we do to change the idea that it's a sport for white people um i think it's a perception people have um coming here um when i first uh came here um even just watching a game uh, when i'm watching matches that's who we're seeing the first time i saw pk suvin mm-hmm. i was like wow really 
the first time I saw a, a black guy on the ice, I was playing pickup one time, and this uh, black boy my age, we stopped for five minutes staring at each other. We're staring at each other like, huh? So <laughs> right now it's it looks the way like just looking at it from the outside. Yeah. You don't. It just lo- it just looks that way. Oh, yeah. It's not necessarily what it is. Um, but um, I've had friends who I've told that I play under like, huh, really? Like, it's it's a white it's a white dude sport. And I told them, no, it's it's really not. Like, it's really fun. Just just give it a try. And I think mm-hmm. what we can do about that is just uh, letting them know that, you know, it's something for them. And also in terms of like the accessibility, it's hard in terms of like, because most times also the immigrants come here maybe at my age, 16, mm-hmm. 17. When in normal the sports in hockey world, you should be probably leaving minor hockey, you know. Yeah. So when they come here at that age, just like me, most times they're told, no, sorry, you can't play. Or late. they kind of, it's too late. That's exactly the phrase. Sorry, it's too late. Or um, they can't afford it. Or they just don't feel like they'll be welcome. There's also things like staring at you when you're in the ice, people looking at you weirdly or asking you if you're here to play. I've had people ask me, are you here to play? I'm like, well, yeah, I'm holding my puck and my stick. <laughs> and I'm, I'm geared up. <laughs> so, you have the hockey player stuff so. on. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's just like, well, look at me. So you have those kind of those kind of things that just like mm-hmm. push people out of, out more. And also in terms of like advertising, just what they see on TV, like especially just having people see that it's for everyone, mm-hmm. and just letting them know that they can also be be in the game. Just I've learned just from talking to my friends who I have like around me and telling them about it. I've had my friends coming into hockey i've had two people that i've told who are actually playing now and i've had others who are interested just from like me talking about it so i think it's it's important yeah absolutely and i mean you're you you are kind of creating your own league slash team you're saying is that that's gonna be in quote saint Luke? that's mm-hmm. that, yes that's right that's right next door to me i'm an ndg so oh, can you tell yeah. me a little bit more about that because that's pretty cool so it's it's gonna be with in quote saint Luke right here um we're trying to just um, something for fun. So maybe once a week, we have the girls come on. We're also trying to kind of subsidize the cost. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to, you know, find sponsors, maybe free equipment to get donations, just so we can get that cost lower. And just have them come in once a week. There's music. I probably get some pizza. Just something fun to have people yeah. have fun. That's basically what fun. it is. Yeah, the way the way the whole reason the sport exists, right? Absolutely. So it's just and they can and they can contact you. What is hockeygirls.team at gmail.com if they want to reach you for anything Mm -hmm. like that, if there's sponsorships or contributions. Yes, yes. And you can also go to my Instagram page, it's hockeygirls with a Z and two underscores. You can always DM me over there. So yeah, it's just to get more more girls into that, into the game. That sounds amazing. Um, it is. Femme Hockey made its mission to represent all women hockey from players, coaches, employees, sports, moms. You, you talked about it. There's, it's, yep. you know, it goes beyond what's on the ice. Um, it combines all perspectives and, and looks at us as sport as a lifestyle. So why did you feel, you Isabel, why did you feel compelled to create a space that speaks to women who have different relationships within hockey? Because there was none. Because there was only, you know, we were only talking about it from a men's perspective. And I wanted to bring the hockey is for everyone, but hacked on it. Make sure then it's real. We are there. We give, you know, voice to all those women. Because at Famdaki, you can write an article and it's going to be there. Like, Ale she came on the Discussion d'Arena and we talk about her story. And I had also Lolita Dandois. She's a, 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 a fashion blogger and she talked about her passion as well. So I feel it's not only, it's not because you didn't play. It's not because you didn't start at the age of three or four. It has to be part of Sports is so important. Sports is life. Uh, in Quebec and Canada, hockey is our sports. And to answer your question earlier, I feel like there's also other sports. And they are very. when you play a sport, you cannot do two or three. We feel like if you play hockey, you have to play 360 years, days a year. It's gotten to that point. Yeah, we're like obsessed with nothing but hockey, hockey, but, hockey, hockey. Yeah. yeah. But I don't, th- we need to do more. We need to do other sports. So if we open the barrier, if we say people, you are welcome, whatever your age, whatever you're, where you're coming from, your level of hockey and let's come and play. 
then we'll have more and more inspiration and model too. And I feel like there's more now. I was at La Classique Kevin Raphael this weekend, mm -hmm. and there were so many, say, uh, Les Frères Joseph, who think Georges Larac. There's more and more bigger than we look, can look at it and be inspired and have more young people to play hockey. There's one thing that always comes to mind whenever someone talks about experience and, oh, you know, you have to have been playing hockey your whole life. Scotty Bowman has enough Stanley Cup rings to put on every single finger, every single toe, and he hasn't played a minute in the NHL, right? So this idea that you have to be an ex-fourth liner on the Anaheim Ducks, uh, that's not really how it works. Um, Isabelle, on the Femme de Hockey podcast, you spoke to a lot of, uh, let's call mm. them hockey men. Um, there was Vincent Le Cavalier, Maxime Talbot, uh, Stéphane Quintal, who works with the league. Um, what role do men play in making hockey more inclusive space for women? We know that we control this space, whether it's by design or not. Um, to open it up, what can men do to make people feel more comfortable in this space? But to uh, just to answer, just to be there, just to talk about women and acknowledge the presence. And uh, it's like we said, we don't want to be there to check a box. We want to be there because we deserve it because we have the talent, we, we, we are competent to do it. And it just open the barrier, just open your mind and say, okay, look, there's so many candidates and it's not only a, a pool of men, there's now many people who can do that. And as you said, I never played hockey. Well, I did to practice, but I quit. <laughs> But it's not because I didn't play that I don't know my hockey. And now you've been around look, hockey a lot, right? So I'm in oh. it. So <laughs> this is, I think, what men can do. It be there, support us. Uh, for sure, there is a money aspect. Yep. We need to uh, have people yep. to, uh, you know, uh, crown and found uh, the woman hockey. Uh, even the, you know, there was the prof professional uh, league, but also recreational. So. Yep just to be open-minded welcome us and let us uh, make our uh, our thing yeah, absolutely and just i mean i think listening is it's, it's i know guys it's tough to do <laughs> but uh, you learn a lot if you just listen for just one moment um i'll start with alera on this question have you seen any improvements in the way people perceive women in hockey since you started all this i mean i know it's been recent but so far in your journey have you seen some progression already um i think i think i have there's been some progression um i think it's also been more of an acceptance to it um i've had people on our instagram page be very supportive sometimes there's occasional like um, ignorant comments but most of the time it's people and being very encouraging um i attended the women's hockey summit a few uh, weeks mm -hmm. ago and there were men there who were who were being very helpful who were trying to you know learn and find things out and who were just trying to um be of help so i think i think that's awesome yeah and you isabel um obviously you know when you look over all those different aspects of your platform there's a lot that we can look at but have you seen any kind of tangible improvements in the way people perceive women in hockey not just again not just playing but in the lifestyle of hockey but i feel like there is a opening right now we have in this moment then we can make change but we are not there yet but but it's it's getting there it's better than 10 years ago for sure uh we, if we look at it there's i think 36 women in the nfl uh, nhl right now with Covering? very uh good you know uh like as reporters no, not reporters. I, I feel I, I, I need uh, what I said in NHL, uh, like France Margaret Belanger. Oh, in, uh, oh, I, like executive position. I think position. it's 36 yeah, yeah, women yeah. who has, you know, uh, a really strong position in each uh, team. Uh, but we're not there yet. There's so many works to do. Yeah, and that's the key part is we are not there yet. When you mentioned France Margaret Belanger, by the way, she's just a spectacular person. She's one of the few, I, I don't get intimidated very easily. You know, I've spoken to a lot of hockey stars. She's intimidating just because she's so amazing. Uh, but as she was saying, you know, I think it's 50% of her coworkers are women. And, you know, everyone's, oh, that's great that you're surprising, but that's kind of the way it should be regardless, right? That shouldn't be a, a wow 
right? That should be the standard. And obviously yeah. there's a significant lack of um, people of color as well, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in, in hockey uh, management, not just playing in management. So that's another thing I think we can absolutely um, help. We, we need to open up avenues and help train people to get into those positions. Now, Hockey Girls and Femme Hockey offer a variety of information. Seriously, go on the Hockey Girls website because one of the biggest things with hockey to me is it's always intimidating if you haven't played. As Alero was ex explaining earlier, you know, you kind of just assume that you're in Canadian, you're born with skates, you know, but it's different, obviously, for immigrants and some people that just never played hockey. So mm -hmm. go to her website. She's going to tell you the basics there and you're going to be able to start learning. Um, obviously, Femme Hockey, too much to mention. Um, what have you learned, you guys, from your own platform since you've launched? Like, what has been the biggest realization for you guys now that you've jumped into this new venture? We'll start with you, Alero. Thank you. I think uh, what I've realized is that um, people really, really need this. Um, just before I, 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 I created that, I didn't because I wasn't playing in a team. I didn't really know too many female hockey players. In my school, we didn't have a hockey team or nothing. We don't even, most people don't, you know, play there. So I'm um, just starting that out. I found that a lot of people who really need somewhere to to learn the basics. Like even if you're, there's some things on there that I've had people who have been playing for a while tell me they learn they learn off of. And I think just putting everything in one place has been really helpful for a lot of girls. And also I think in terms of um, speaking, like um, how do I explain this? Like talking, yeah. just talking in general. I think is important. So I'm actually being. We've been working with um, Saria Tinker. She plays in the NWHL. We're thinking of starting kind of a safe space, like uh, maybe Sunday talk. We just have girls, cool. female hockey players coming and just talk about stuff because most of them play in uh, in boys teams most of the time. So they feel alone. There's not much they can say. There's no one to really complain to. So we're trying to have that safe space where girls can talk about anything at all that they want. And I realized also that girls are looking to learn always. People in general are looking to learn. So we also have um, a master class there on, on Hockey Girls, where we, um, we have a class twice a week um, with um, coaches from different aspects of life, nutrition, uh, mental cool. health, um, fitness, who will uh, help girls learn more. We're just trying to get girls learning and being the best you know, version they can be in, the, in life. Awesome. And, and you, Isabel, um, obviously you've spoken to a lot of people. What have you learned throughout this whole launch here? And, 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 and specifically, we're going to go back to the, to the lifestyle of hockey, not necessarily them playing on the ice. What, what, what have you learned? What have you grown? You know, what, what's been the biggest shock to you since you've started all this? But there's so many people who loves hockey. And Famdake, it's not only for women, it's for everyone. It's very a uh, welcoming platform, and I, I felt there's yeah I needed to create a space for women to feel uh, you know welcoming and free and respect, but I found out there's so many men who needed that way to talk about hockey, who yeah. needed to have those discussion, and I feel there we are bigger than one person. We are a community, and I feel then it was needed and more people is doing it i'm so proud of it when i see uh, girls like Alejo who started her own podcast and her own platform and making sure she's opening barrier for everyone so it's i mean just ridiculously everything. impressive it, it so i mean I, I between the ages of 16 and 18 i don't remember what i was doing but it wasn't this <laughs> impressive i'll tell you it wasn't Thank moving you. to another country learning a new language and learning a new sport you know i heard your interview in french i mean that was just amazing um yeah. like I, I, i'm so impressed by you alero Thank now you. i am too i know a Thank lot of you. people look up to you even at a young age and that's a it's, a it's a big responsibility it's a burden but you are the kind of strong person that can lead so do you have a message for the girls and women who, who, who are looking to be part of hockey whether a player coach or referee you know what's your message to those to the women um that want to get involved in this beautiful sport okay um so i think just like the nike slogan just do it like just go ahead just do it nothing should stop you um, there's going to be some issues along the way, but I think if you just believe in yourself and you you know what you want to do, then just go ahead and do it. I think you're going to love hockey. You're going to love it. I assure you, you're going to love hockey and you're going to be happy that you did it. Yeah, there, there are I'm always few, here to help. Yeah, there's, there are a few, few better feelings than just skating and not, you know, it's the few... Yeah. 
it's the only time that your brain isn't going in overload. You just get to kind of enjoy it. Uh, Isabel, did you have a message for any uh, uh, any of the women or, or men? I, I love that you mentioned that too because it doesn't have to be specific because there's a, yeah. there men can absolutely learn from women in hockey. It's something we need to do much more of. Um, so what message would you have uh, right now, but particularly for the women that are looking to be involved in hockey? You are important. You you do a, you make a difference. Whatever you do, if you're playing, if you are a parent, whatever, you're a sister, you're a girlfriend, you are important. And what you're doing, it's important for if you, for everyone. And just believe, believe in you, believe in everyone. I think it and hacked on it. I love that message. Oh, mom's back. Hi, mom. Um, okay, <laughs> so uh, is there anything you guys, obviously, you guys are working on so many things, but is there anything you guys want to speak about right now? Any exciting news? Uh, you can give us your socials so, because I know a lot of people are going to want to follow. A lot of people are going to want to contact you once we put this out um, to see if they can support. And I strongly suggest offering your support right now. So we'll start with uh, you, Isabel. Um, is there anything you want to plug right now? This is your opportunity. But we're going to start, uh, we have a new um, season beginning in September uh, for Femme Docky. So a really uh, nice guest. Uh, let's say we start with a really well-known woman hockey player who she's uh, in Calgary right now. And she's probably one of the famous of all. So I'm very proud uh, to receive her. I'm so, a big Marie-Philippe uh, Poulain fan as well, yeah. Is, is, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Did I? Oh, whoops. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> so, it's going to be an interesting uh, season this year again. So, join us. And if you want to go on the website, fam.hockey, we have the store. We have merch. Then, and 10% of the proceed goes to uh, the Canadian Foundation to help kids to have access to sports. So it's a good way. It's a win-win situation. Nice hoodie, Benny, socks. Very nice. So you support women in hockey and also at the Canadian Foundation. So for, for hockey girls, we are, like I mentioned, a team later in the year or next year. So we're kind of just looking for people who are interested in sponsoring or if you want to just volunteer your time. That's also amazing too. It doesn't have to be financially. You can also volunteer if you like to coach. And if you'd also like to play, you know, you could just send me a message on Hockey Girls on Instagram with a Z and two underscores. Or you could uh, message me on an uh, email, hockeygirls.team at gmail.com. And also, I am working with Hockey for Youth. Hockey Girls is going to be partnering hey. with Hockey for Youth. They are a youth organization that's focused on getting teenagers like myself um, in, on the ice. So we're going to be partnering together um, across Canada, actually, to have more girls into the sport. So if you'd like to donate to Hockey Girls, you can go to the Hockey for Youth website and um, there's a scroll bar. Just tap Hockey Girls and you can make your donations. So anything, anything would be, we would appreciate it. And we just heard from Alero and Isabel, two powerful, smart, uh, motivated women. Obviously, we've seen what they've done. And now at this point, the goal is to support them. So um, if you can support Alero in her projects, obviously you heard she's going to be playing some hockey in Cote St. Luke. So I'm inviting everyone in this area uh, to come out to support. Go on the website. It's hockeygirls.com and do everything you can to make it more inclusive. The key part here is what she mentioned is to make it fun. And I think she's going to be a huge, huge uh, motivating tool to make hockey fun. And that is so important. Just like Isabel mentioned, you can find Isabel ici on Fan Point Hockey. And her point there to not just the inclusion, to make it fun again. I'm going to want you guys, we're going to leave on that note. Remember, um, at the end of it, it's a sport. We're supposed to smile. We're supposed to have fun. And that's really what matters most. I know we get stuck in this hockey. Everything's got to be stats and goals here and that. But when it comes down to it, hockey is meant to be fun. And both our guests today, Alero and Isabel, um, are going to be huge, huge powers to change that and make hockey a very fun sport. Thanks for tuning in.